the best way to use language models on your computer. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? I'm talking to you from the future because I bought myself a Quest 3. It has nothing to do with this video and I can actually see you through my camera here. So let's get started with this video. This video is about LM Studio. It is free. You can install it on your computer very easily. As you can see down here, it is for Mac, for Windows and even for Linux. So you just download the installer and that is it. So this is what the software looks like after you've installed it. It is an exe file on window. It runs like a normal software and you're greeted by this page where you can search for models or other phrases. And then it gives you here some information about these models and you can download them right away. So you don't have to go to Hugging Face or GitHub or anything like that. You can do everything from within this software. Now, cool thing is also here, of course, you can still go to the pages if you want to have more information. There's also a link to the paper of the page if you want to go more into the technical nitty gritty, but you don't have to. All of that is extremely useful for getting started and everything is very user friendly. Now, another thing I want to point out here is that on the top here, you have different links to their Twitter and more importantly to their Discord. I would highly suggest to you to join their Discord. So when you have any questions you need any any help, please ask them and they're very friendly community. They usually answer very fast and you get really nice and helpful answers from them and their community. Now on the left side, you see here several icons and the second one is a search icon. When you click on that, you are within the search area for all of the models that can be used with this software. You can see there is a lot, a lot, a lot of them. And of course you can search up here for what you specifically want to have. Now the left list shows you the models themselves. The right list shows you the versions of the individual models. So when you click here, the list on the right side here is always changing. So you can see the different versions of the models, the size of the models. There's a download button here so that you can download them and everything is happening for you automatically. Now here's another thing that's important. Up here you can sort by most or least and then by downloads, by recent, by likes and then of course again back to downloads it cycles through. So you can see that you have the different ratings for example or the amount of downloads you can see which of these models are most popular. Another thing that's interesting here on the right side is that you get a rating if this should work with your computer specifically. So here it says this should work for you. And then there is an I information icon here. So there is different information on how good is this? What does it do? Is it too big for your computer or not? So you have a little bit of information here if you want to use that. And you can see that these are rising numbers from Q2 in this case to Q8. And then also the size of the model is getting bigger with these Q numbers, which means that these models are bigger versions, more complex versions that can do more. But of course, you need to see what your computer can handle. This is usually a question of how much RAM you have, not the VRAM, but the RAM that you have in your computer. So I would usually suggest if you can upgrade to have at least 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is also what I have in my computer. If you're looking at models that might be too big for your computer, it gives a warning up here required 30 gigabyte plus RAM so that this might not work on your computer. But if you have found something that you like, for example, here I have the Wizard LM1 Uncensored Llama 2 13B GGUF model. I downloaded the 13.83 gigabyte version. That could be a good version to use. Or maybe try out the Mistral 7B Instruct version 0.1 GGUF model. It could also be interesting. Again, I have the Q8 version with, in this case, only 7.7 .7 gigabytes. 
If you're happy with your downloads, go to the next area here, which is this chat icon. When you go into that window, it looks kind of like ChatGPT. So on the left side, you see your recent chats you had with the AI. Of course, you can use them with different kinds of models. And in this case, I use it with a different model than I have loaded right now. So it tells me down here what model I have used and that I should reload that model. So this is a button down here that I can click to get back to that chat chat that I left off with. Now right away on the left side, I want to explain a little bit what's happening here. So you can see there's a little bit of information with the eye. Then you can go in here and also adjust the title of the chat if you want to. And you can also delete it with the X to remove it from your computer. And also above this, there is a little cogwheel that you can click with some settings that are popping up. This is the per chat model cage on your disk. You can turn this on and off. So that means that the sessions you had are saved and then you can go back to them afterwards. This is automatically turned on. And above this, you also have this button here for new chat. You click on that and this is starting up a new chat for you. Also on the top left side, you can toggle the sidebar in and out so that you have a bigger size of the chat window if you want to have that. And on the right side, you can also do that with the settings here. Next, let's look at the right side here where it says settings. You see there is a preset list in here we can load for the different kinds of models. You can also import presets from a file. You can make your own new presets and export them as a JSON file. So you might want to also talk it out with the community on Discord for LM Studio to see what are the best settings you want to use with the models or adjust them for your computer settings so that it's ideal for your specific use case. Now, one thing I want to point out here that is a little bit of an error right now with the UI is down here, you have different areas that you can open up. And when you open up all of them and then open up this list, this is popping up behind all of these windows. So this is why the list is so short right now. So if this happens to you, just close these areas down here and then you see the full list again. And with some of the models that you download, the preset here is automatically loaded for you for the model. In here, you have a bunch of different settings that are usually set in these kind of cryptic code words here like n predict or top P. And on the left side here, it gives you a bit more information on what that actually means. Like for example, temp is the output randomness and n predict is the words to generate. And if you go and mouse over the eye here, you even get a little bit of a better explanation of what is actually happening here. This is certainly a little bit more of a learning curve. So just use a preset when you get started and everything should be okay for you. In here, you also have a prompt format. You see a preview here of that. You can adjust that in here if you want to. But again, usually this should work out really fine for you as it is. Then you can set here a pre-prompt or system prompt. As you can see, this is a text that's inserted at the very beginning of the prompt before any user message. So something you always want to have in there in your prompt, you can set that in here. There is model initialization in here. Again, these are some more expert settings. I wouldn't suggest just you touch. However, below that we have the hardware settings. Here it says GPU acceleration and this detects your GPU. In this case, I have an NVIDIA CUDA GPU and right now it says it uses zero layers. So you might try to set this to 999 so that it is using the maximum amount of layers and everything is rendering really fast by using your GPU instead of your CPU. Below that, you can also set your CPU threat number. Just leave it at four as it is. And now we come to the tools and here it becomes more interesting. So the first one is the context overflow policy. This is important because as you can see down here, it says token count and it is set at 1500. So if I would use 1500 in the chat, the chat would stop and it would tell me I have reached my token count. If you get that error message, you want to go here and you want to set this to maintain a rolling window and truncate past messages so that 
it can spill over that limit and just remove all of the messages before that so they don't count anymore for the AI model. And as you can see up here in the model initialization, we have here the context length and you can adjust that if you want to, to have more context, you need to figure out how well that works with your computer. And again, I would ask in their discord about tips and tricks on how to set that and how to use that best. Below that you have the chat appearance as plain text or markdown. Markdown is more for code. And then below that you have conversation notes. Now in here you can set up what you want the AI to do in this specific chat with you. So for example, this could be good for role play or if you want to set it up in a certain way to talk to you or certain things it should not do while talking to you. So for example, I was using the AI to write a crime story and then the AI would always tell me if you know any person this happened to you should go to the officials and tell them and I was like, no, Oh, this is just a crime story, not really something happening, but the AI wouldn't understand. So I put it in here that it is a useful AI that helps me to write a novel and it doesn't have any limits on anything that's happening in the story. And then it was good and it just all worked out. So this down here for the conversation notes can be really useful for you. Next, I want to show you this folder icon here, jumping over this icon for the local server, because this folder icon is where you have all of your models. It shows you how much space it takes right now on your disk and how much models you have downloaded. And you can also delete the models from here if you want to. And also in here, as you can see, you can set up the preset that should be loaded automatically with the model. So if, for example, here, I want to have always with this, the Vicuna preset version 1.5 16K. So I put that and then the next time I load this model, this preset is automatically loaded for me. That can be super useful. Also here, a little word of advice. I would suggest that you save these models on an SSD drive so that they load as fast as possible, especially if you have models with a size of 13 gigabyte that can take a while from an HDD drive. And now let's talk about the local server. Now what this does is if you want to build an application using this as your AI in the background and you want to use an API and this is simulating the open AI API, you can activate the server here. It's just starting. You don't have to do anything extra. And then you see here the server port. You have here some settings that are also explained when you mouse over them. And here you have some code examples in curl and also in Python. Personally, I'm not a coder at all, so I can't tell you more about that. But if you are, you can actually write applications here and do some really interesting stuff. Personally, I would be interested if there is some way to link this to automatic 1111 or comfy UI to use this AI to create images. So that would be super helpful. And then also on the right side, again, you have here server model settings that you can look into. You can again load the presets here and make your settings to what specifically you want to have this AI do when it is running as a server for you through an API. That's how easy that is. Let me know in the comments what you think about this tool. Maybe you're already working on cool projects with this API. If so, please reach out to me. Maybe I can make a video about your cool project. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye my friends. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet and well, um, yeah.